have to make sure I was disconnected from these headphones because it's Monday and I was listening to the third eye frequency activation thing and then I got all of this stuff coming through so I'm going to continue to listen to it but I'm going to record it because the thoughts come in so fast and I can't write the notes fast enough on my phone and all of this stuff but um I'll start off with the you are so sassy <laughs> I'll start off with um the download about astrology so astrology has like that root logi thing going on like geology and I was just thinking about how astrology is often invalidated but we describe it in such lofty terms that of course it would be considered to be something so far-fetched and so far out but in reality especially when I was using a sky view on my iPhone and I could actually see the And I could actually see the planet in front of me, in front of my face. It was such a trippy feeling to know that this phone is accurate right now and Saturn is right. I'm staring this massive, huge planet right in the face. And it's not that far in terms of space and time. It's not that far away. This massive planet with all of this activity, with all of this activity going on, in the rings all of that energy and just to think about how much energy that is is like to think about getting hit by one of those rocks god damn it like they are moving fast <laughs> that is fast i don't know if you could we can't not we cannot conceive we cannot conceive of the we have numbers abstract symbols that are supposed to represent the combination that is supposed to give us an idea of how accelerated that momentum is out there it's nothing that can compare we can't compare we can't there's nothing else for us to compare it to it's too massive and it's too powerful and about astrology it's on a plane okay geology we study the masses um and the terrain and the water and where everything is in relation to one another. It's the same thing that Einstein said when you look at that um, view of the solar system. I'm trying to summon up the image of when it shows those flat circular orbits or it like shows the orbits as flat it doesn't vary them it shows everything on a plane as though everything was going straight through the middle and then where the planets are massive and attracting gravity creates this bend in space time which creates a dip in that fabric of space time because you're setting something and then like the the school experiment for that is when you hold like a piece of fabric really taut and then you put up, up an orange, let's say you allow an orange to roll on it. That's how we're conceiving that the fabric of space-time is bent by planets that are massive enough to form their own gravity and have their own uh, spot in that fabric as the individual oranges rolling around that, sp that, that strip of space-time on that plane if you want to cut it through the middle. Um, that is astrology. The reason why certain things are exalted is because of the ratios of the planet in its orbit, the distance from Earth is at such a ratio in that portion of the sky that it's agreeable and it's pulling on the fabric in a way that is pleasing to like in a Fibonacci sequence type way. And all of it is pleasing in equality with each other because you have to have some of those difficult aspects and those hard angles to make the type of shapes that there is like diagrams that show 
like the shape that Jupiter makes is the star of David when you show it in like a line in its relation to the earth and in its orbit, it makes the star of David. Um, I think that the the Ven I think that Venus may make a lotus flower. I'm not sure. I haven't memorized those, but that would be a really cool thing to memorize. Like, I really want to start a school where we are able to study these things seriously, and we are able to navigate our world, our inner world, just as much as our outer world. The tangible and the intangible, but that would definitely be one of the study materials, which is to study what what is in fall, detriment, exaltation, and and all of those things and its actual relationship to uh, where it's at in its orbit um, in relation to here, in relation to us. Um, another download that I get is about the fact that there is astrology on other planets, so. If you feel like you are from somewhere else and you've imported yourself here, oh, I have to mention that too. If you feel like you're from somewhere else and you've imported yourself into this dimension, remember that there is astrology on Jupiter. The astrology of Jupiter will be the same thing as like here because it's cardinal, it's directional, it's primary, it's spatial relationships. And spatial relationships might not feel the same on Jupiter, but because we've developed the system in such a way um we can apply it from here to there now the dimensions of jupiter as that huge gas giant up might not feel down may not feel sideways because it might be feel it might be so active it might not even matter the kind of eth etheric body that you would have to develop to be on jupiter and to exist on that level in, in one of my dreams I have flown past it and it's really like it's a different zone when, when I've seen those videos when um people just take their regular phones and put it to the sky and the planets are moving they're shaking and some of them are like flat discs as though there are portals in the sky and Jupiter has like a hard mantle core, but the rest of that is gaseous. So I'm not saying that the light can never go straight through, but what I'm saying is that that light is being bounced in a way that is not familiar to us here. You know how things flash and they say, be careful because it might give you a Caesar. The light bouncing off of all of the gaseous particles of Jupiter is creating a crystal, like how the light mo is moving through the top of this crystal in order to refract and stuff. Jupiter's so fast and it's gas. The light is very active there. I don't know why I keep talking about Jupiter and using that as my example. I'm not Jupiter dominant, I'm Uranus dominant, but Jupiter is just a really easy example because I feel like maybe I just know more about the planet then. When I had said import, I was remembering the fact that I was like, wow, dreams are what we whatever we do when we're conscious, they're like is like um downloading all of this information. So watch what you consume. I'm definitely trying to uh, manage what I consume and edit my feeds and stuff like that and clean up and be more conscious and intentional about what I'm subscribing to, who I'm following, and what I'm listening to throughout the day and for how long. A lot of what I listen to, even though I'm trying to find new music to listen to, new artists and stuff, I definitely subscribe to my own a little experiment with frequencies and everything. So that's mostly my diet and my headphones is depending on what day it is, that frequency, other things related to it. I've never paired with this one before. But dreams um, are importing that information and it's like a database. It's definitely a database of... Um... Hey, baby. It's definitely a database of symbolism. 
It's a database of symbolism that we are importing our, our downloads into. So like we pull from our dreams and we study them in waking life as though we're supposed to be figuring it out in waking life. But really we're supposed to be just downloading more information to import into our dreams. Our dreams are the reflection of our inner realities, but our inner realities are a mirror of our outer. And so whatever we can shift in both worlds, as above, so below, like maybe above is more so about being longitudinal, no, latitudinal than longitudinal. Maybe above is about being straight up, y-axis type. And then below is longitudinal, horizontal, when we're sleeping, the surface, and then the underbelly of everything. Um, you can control your dreams. You can import symbols into your dreams. Did you know that? I have also started to look at random things like the matrix will send me random things because I do, because it knows that I look these things up and different random stuff that happens in my real life. I will look up what it means as a dream symbol. I don't know if people do that, but dream symbols are not restricted to just the symbols that pop up in your dreams. They are, there's a whole dictionary of very, um, old and most likely very accurate correspondences and relationships between symbols and uh what they trigger in our mentality like the symbol the dream symbol of cream is like like whipped cream is literally just like wealthiness or like pleasurable things coming to you um dreaming about some dreams are prophetic there are certain days of the moon cycle where dreams are particularly uh more likely to happen or occur than not and i feel like that has to do with the clarity of the water the clarity of the memory and its relationship with how the moon is pulling on the water whether it's agitating it or whether it's still enough to like actually reflect a true mirror image but um i feel Definitely only certain people who know what I'm talking about if you're thinking about these things on this level. But um, I follow the moon cycle very closely. I've been looking at the different descriptions of days cross platforms. I'm really interested in finding the original text that they have figured all of this out from. But right now I'm just on the tail end of the surface of those things and just looking at the descriptions and stuff. And I tried to get into some mansions, the nakshatras, nakshatras, um, the moon mansions and stuff like that and see if that corresponds with different things. And it does. It does. That's definitely material at the school. Definitely. Um, so let me try to connect with this frequency again so I can continue to channel because I've been talking about things that I've that are backed up hmm. it's something hurt in my foot but um Looking in my YouTube history so that I can click on the correct video. And I don't know how long it'll take to kick in, but I was like laying down and then I just wasn't. Because <laughs> I was like, I have to do this. I have to make a video or something. Um, it's getting a little long though. If Unless something comes through within the next few seconds, then I'm going to cut it short. But um. Oh, 
Well, I was writing notes on my phone, so I can't. I'm using my phone to. I'm using this to listen to it, and then I wrote the notes down in my phone. But um, oh, what is channeling? That's what I'll end on. So this is a channeling video, and what is channeling? <laughs> the scientific way that I can put channeling that people are gonna understand later on is that, and and what I mean by that is that I'm gonna. I'm going, a lot of my goal is to take these very lofty ideas and root it in the science that I do know of because I know that these things are related. <laughs> these things have to be related. A lot of metaphysical ideas were already figured out by the people before us. American culture is very, very young, <laughs> very, very young, 200 years and plus so. And there are 15,000, like, tribes and peoples and all of these different phases that wrote down all of their experiences throughout the different phases of the earth too and its relationship with herself and um there's a lot of knowledge there so um we have to marry these things together we really have to stop pretending like things are so mystical when really they are grounded in a lot of truth that we refuse to correlate or synthesize together. And by this, I mean um, to say that channeling is very simple. It's not something that people are faking. It's not something that people are, um, well, I mean, I'm not saying that there are not fake people out there doing it, but I'm saying that when people think that they're channeling or whatever they've learned to be channeling and they've figured out that, wow, I am a channeler. I am very familiar with what it means is, I am very familiar with tuning into particular parts of my brain because I am able to channel, I'm able to tap into that channel, that wave, that crease, in my brain and I am able to use my words to pull and recall information within that cluster of neurons and electricity within that relationship within my own mind and quite possibly because everything is so connected and our experiences of things are limited not that we all experience the same thing, but there's 12 houses, there's 12 topics, there's nine planets, you know, nine bodies or whatever, maybe more affecting us and stuff. The combination is a lot, but it's only a matter of um, powers. So what would that be? Nine to the 12th power or 12 to the ninth power that would give you the number of different possibilities for like combinations that all of these things connect together. There's some equation or formula for it. I know that other people know what I'm talking about. And um, that is what we're playing on. That's what we're trying. That's what humans have been trying to simplify and distill down for millennia. What is the human experience within all of this? And the answer is in these lofty topics that could be grounded in real fact, which is a channeler pertaining back and tying it back into my idea that I'm trying to convey to you is a channeler is talking about how hardcore <laughs> they're able to focus in on a particular uh, train of thought or wavelength in order to possibly tap into a piece of their own mind that is within your mind. Something, and when people are like, something has led you to this reading, and people are like, well, I mean, I know I'm skeptical about that stuff because I'm like, of course the algorithm led me to this because it takes my cookies. <laughs> They've been taking the cookies. <laughs> and, and, and the words and the recordings and stuff like that, of course this is recommended to me. But within the larger scheme of things, beyond the conspiracy of it all, this literally means that I have the same neuronic neuron pathways as other people who are who have fallen into this side of the internet or this part of the algorithm or getting recommended these things. Um, because now we all have YouTubers that we share in common that mean more dear to us than 
celebrities because these are our channels that we're tuning into throughout different phases of our lives as people are starting to use lenses and other eyes in order to mirror it back to themselves and like reverberate. <laughs> people are reverberating throughout time and space because they're speaking to a mirror and then posting it. So like, that's also the most Aquarius thing about this age is the fact that the true rebellion of it all is, is like you have to be some level of self-observant. -observ you have to be self-observant. And that's the 11. Aquarius rules the 11th house, 1-1. One, one. That's why it's the 11th, because everybody as individuals together, we're all very self-aware. It makes you more self-aware. It makes you more self-reflective. It makes you more focused. When people have to review their videos and stuff, some people get neuroses. <laughs> some people get psych psycho, um, psychological, the mirror is, the mirror doesn't translate well for them when they see themselves and then they kind of go into a whole other thing because self-editing self it's a it's for everybody but it's not pretty all the time period so it's like yeah i know you know what i'm talking about somebody out there um i think that that's pretty much it Thank you for listening. If you made it to the end of my video, this was me channeling with the third hour frequency or whatever. If I pick a different frequency and start channeling something else, I will post it on my channel. <laughs>